Hello and welcome back to Project Pro. So this lecture we are going to get our hands dirty and build our first workflow with using the Apache Airflow. So in this lecture we'll create and structure our DAC as well as we'll define all the tasks and the dependencies related to that task as well as we will also understand operators and executors that we have already seen the theoretical stuff in the previous lecture but also let us discuss this in le this lecture as well to get a better understanding also we will use like scheduling as well as triggering the rules and the templating and the parameterization that is also a good practices in apache airflow and also at the last we will also see some error handling and the retries so without wasting any time let's jump into it okay so now let's first talk about what type of workflow you are going to be created in our project so basically what you are going to do we are going to create some task like first one will be like creating the tables so that will be our first task or we can say a first operator where you will create a table which known as users table in the postgresql so you have to make a connection to able to do that so the connection will able to work with external data sources so here our external data sources is like the postgresql database as well as we are going to trigger another operator like is api available so here in this tutorial you are going to learn about some of the types of the operator where once it is satisfied then only it goes to the next operator so this is basically our tag which has the dependency to one another extracting user has the dependency with the is api available so once the api is available then only our extracting user will work and after that this is like the most common op operation which is processing user and then we are going to store that user back into our postgresql so this is going to be very interesting so we are going to run a python code to able to create all this task and this workflow in our airflow so without further any ado let's jump into it so first and foremost before jumping on to creating our workflow we need to first understand and let me remind you what really is a dag which is like direct acyclic graph so this dag is really just a mathematical structure which represents our workflow as a collection of task and they are collect connected together by using the dependencies so as you can see these are the different tasks and they are connected using this dependencies so as you can see we got the task b and c which are depending upon the task a then we got the d which depends on b c as well as a and the e task which depends on d c and a so once the task is completed then only it goes to the next step but as you can see they will ensure that the task should execute in the specific order and there are no circular relationship so as you can see here the e task is dependent upon the a task but a task does not depend on e right because that may create the circular relationship and apache airflow will not allow you to create such circular relationships it will have like the dag which has like a streamlined process where the one task is connected to the other using the dependencies okay so the first thing you need to do is you need to define your skeleton for your dag so for creating that dag all you have to do is go into your materials folder where your apache airflow is up and running and your docker engine is also healthy so all you have to do is we have already the dag folder created so you have to just right click on it and create a new file and the new file will be the python file so that will be your dag that instantiate your dag object so the name you are going to provide is user underscore processing okay so as you can see our python file has been created so the first thing first you need to install the airflow package in your system so i'll highly recommend you to go and just pip install apache dash airflow and if you are facing any difficulty setting up that just let me know in the comments and once it is done you can just simply import the airflow so you can just simply like from airflow you can import the dag so we are importing dag object from the airflow library and also we need to import like the date time because so we need to schedule our dag so the start time we are going to use like the date time package so here we are going to from date time we are going to import the date time so the next thing is you need to create our dag object so we need to instantiate our dag object here so we are with dag and in here you need to pass some parameters so the first parameter will be like the unique identifier of your dag which is like the id of your workflow so for your dag you can just give like user processing i'll just give user processing so that will be your first argument so this should be a unique identifier 
then comes the start date so the start date is like start underscore date equal to we are using the date time here and in the date time we can give it as 2023 1 comma 1 and also at the next line we are going to give the schedule interval here so we can give like schedule underscore interval and we are going to schedule this at a daily instance so for daily you can just give it like at the rate that's it that's all you have to do and after that there is also one argument that we need to pass which is catch up so catch up is like by default set it up to true but i'll highly recommend you to keep it as false because if the catch up is true then once you just instantiate and just created your workflow then like between the current time and the start date that catch up activity will get triggered automatically and that we don't need right we don't need to catch up all these tasks till you're going to start scheduling your workflow so i'll just highly recommend you to set it up to catch up is equal to false that's it that's all you have to do and once you set it up we are going to rename it as dag and that's it that's all you have to do so this is like the skeleton of your DAG. so after that you can add as many of the tasks in it like the next step would be like we are going to create a table and also like see if the api is available or not and so on those tasks will come in the next step so before jumping on to creating our operators and tasks let's first understand and refresh what are operators and the tasks so operators are like i know you know it like operators are the tools in your data workflow toolbox and each are designed to operate some specific task so as you can see we got the direct acyclic graph and we got different tasks and have the different operators and there are like different operator types available such as python operator bash operator and each has their own strength so it totally depends on you which language you are more familiar with so you can use either the python one or the bash operator one both will work like a charm so here we have different tasks like processing that transforming that user details as well as see if that api is available or not so that is totally related to the sensor part that also we are going to see but the first thing is we need to create a table in the postgre and set up a connection with postgre using the connection facility of the airflow so let's jump on to the create table part okay so once you have the skeleton of your DAG, the first thing is we need to create a task for creating the table in the postgresql so uh, before that we need to also make the connection to the postgresql but let's do that after this first we'll define a create table task so in here what we can do is we can give like the name like create table to our task create table and it's equal to we need to first import like the postgres operator so for using any operator you need to import that from the airflow so all you can do is you can just go ahead and just from airflow dot providers dot postgres dot operators dot postgres and you need to import like the postgres operator so once you import that you can use it in your code so the create table will be like we are going to use the postgres operator here so just use the postgres operator and in here the first parameter we need to pass is the task id so i'll keep it simple i'll keep only the create table so i'll highly recommend you to use the task id similar to the variable which we are assigning so just task underscore id will be equal to the create table after that the next argument would be like the postgres connection id so that we are going to see in in a bit so just postgres con id which will be equal to postgres and after that the next step and statement would be our sql statement so the sql is will be equal to we are going to use like the simple triple quotes here and in here we can define like our sql statement so our sql statement is nothing but a ddl statement here so what we are going to do we are going to create a table if not exist so you may ask why we are using this if not exist so since if you run this process twice this will get errored out because if not exists it will throw an error as the table already exists so to able to avoid those error and failure you can use this if not exists so that it will not create a table but it will also not throw an error because you already defined that so we are going to use users table here and in here we are going to give the schema so the schema would be like first name first name and the data type is text as well as not null 
the next one would be like the last name again text not null then we have like the country of that customer that's all text not null then we got the username then again text not null then we have the password text not null and then we have the email and text not null so this is like our first create table statement where we are going to create a postgresql table and we are going to just give the co semicolon here and that's it that is your first operator and all you have to do is you can just simply execute it and your workflow as well as your DAG as well as your table will be created but first we need to create a connection to the PostgreSQL so first thing first we need to define a connection and defining the connection is not the most difficult task in the world it is pretty straightforward and simple task so all you have to do is just log into the airflow with a localhost 8080 and all you have to do is from the home page you got to go into the admin then go to the connections and in connection as you can see we don't have any connections here so just add a new record and in record we need to give like the connection id so this same will be in your code so in your code we are given like the postgres and the connection type will be again like postgres and i'll highly recommend you to give any description but here let's keep it blank so the host name will be postgres then we got like the login the login will be like airflow the password will be airflow and the port is 5432 that's it that's all you have to do and just click on save so this is how your connection will be saved so just as you can see our connection id postgres and the connection type is postgres is saved so when you are building your DAG, I'll highly recommend you to test it as well. So as you can see, we got a create table here, so we can test it up. So there is a procedure called as Docker Compose PS. So in the terminal, you can simply go ahead with the Docker dash Compose PS. That's it. Just head it up. Then you got to type a simple command. So the command is like Docker Docker exec slash dash it. Then you got to do like the scheduler name so the scheduler name is material airflow scheduler dash one so i'll just paste it over here and you have to go like slash bin slash bash that's it just hit enter and there you go you are in the apache airflow bash so here you can access the airflow cli so if you just hit it up like flow dash h here are all the commands that you can use and execute on your airflow so to test our tasks there is fairly a simple command all you have to do is just type airflow tasks test and you are going to give like the DAG ID so our DAG ID just copy and paste it over here as well as after that you have to go and go ahead with the task ID so the task ID is like the create table and after that just give some date so we'll give the date as 2023 01 01 that's it just hit enter and wait for it to complete so as you can see here our task has been succeeded so as you can see we got our table users and the task is success so i'll highly recommend you to just test your task whenever you add any task for operators in your DAG. so this is like a best practice and if you face any errors like if you he didn't find any DAG id or the task id then you might have created some errors while creating the task or operators so just go into the airflow ui and you can debug that from there and if you are still facing difficulties then you can let me know in the comments and we can solve it together so before jumping on to the next part we need to first understand what are sensors so this we have already talked about in the previous lecture but let's refresh it a bit so sensors are like the watchdogs of your workflow so they will allow our task to wait like patiently until some specific conditions are met which will ensure that your workflows progresses when it is only appropriate so you can like add any dependencies so for our k use case we are going to use like is api available so once if a is api is available then it will trigger the next task so before that it will not it should not trigger that is our requirement of the project okay so now since we have already created a table our next step would be like to create our sensors so sensors just now we have talked about so the first net will be like is api available so the first sensor we are going to check if the api is available or not and then only it should proceed to the next step so let's create one variable is api available and here we are going to use like the http sensor that is we need to import first 
so first you need to import like from airflow providers dot http dot sensors dot http you have to import the http sensor so the same thing you are going to use like the http sensor here and in this object what you are going to pass is some arguments so the same thing we what we have done for like the create table we are going to use like the task id here so the task id will be like the first one so that will be like is underscore api underscore available so similarly like i have given the similar kind of approach in the sensor as well and after that the next argument would be like http connection id so that connection also you need to use like the http underscore con underscore id and that will be like user underscore api and you need to provide like the endpoint here so the endpoint is from where that website is going to listen to the api path so that api path would be like api slash so from this we are going to listen if is api is available or not so that it will proceed to the next task so this sensor is already created so this is very simple to do so we will go ahead with our next step so once we have defined our sensor the next step would be we need to like extract the user's information so once we have like checked if the api is available or not now we have to get the data from that http sensor so all you have to do is first we need to use like the import statement here to able to get that procedure so here we are going to use like the simple http operator so to do that just give like from airflow dot providers dot http dot operators dot http you have to import like the operator which we are going to use which is like a simple http operator that's it and at the below let's create our next operator which will extract the user's data from the http sensor so we are going to give the name as extract user which will be equal to our procedure which is like simple http operator and in brackets we are going to pass some argument the similar ones that we have used earlier which is like the task id and like the task id let's give it as only which is extract user then the next argument would be like the http connection id so the http underscore connection id which will be similar to the http sensor which is like the user api so i'll just get that here over here and after that we need to give like the endpoint here as well so the endpoint will be also similar and the endpoint is like api slash so the next response will be like the method so what type of method you need to get so since we are you know extracting the data we are not going to post any data so we are going to use like the get method here so the method would be like get and in here we need to get the response so we are going to get the response in the json format so also we are going to import like the json here so just import json here that's it the response would be like equals to response filter equals to lambda so we are going to use the lambda function and get it in the json format so lambda response which is like the function name and this will be equal to the json dot loads loads we are going to get the response dot txt that's it and again also we need to pass like the log response as true so the log equals to true so that's it that you have successfully created the extract user operator using the simple http operator so you have extracted the data and completed like the third building block of our dac so once you have extracted the user data using the simple http operator the next step would be need to process that data and for data processing we are going to use like the python operator so to do that all you have to do is you have to import like the python operator as well as like the pandas and we are going to normalize the json so we are going to use like json normalize to import so the first thing first you need to import like the python operator from the airflow dot operators dot python and before after that you have to just import like the pandas and from pandas you need to import like the json normalize so the next step here would be like you have to create like the process user 
so the first thing is you need to create like the process user operator and after that you are going to use like the python operator here so as you can see we have already imported the python operator so after that all you have to do is again you need to assign like the task id to it so we are going to assign like the process user here and after that we are going to give like a function so this is like a python callable function so this process underscore user we need to define first and after that we can directly call that out using the python operator so that is like the power of python operators here so now let's define that process user now so the first thing first you need to first define a function so for defining a function and in that we need to pass some arguments so ti will be the argument that we are going to pass in the process user and after that you need to define like the user and in which we are going to use like the xcom pool so just bear with me this is like we are going to see in the next lecture but for now let's just follow along with me and you will able to understand whole this code and here we are going to also you giving like the task ids so the task id will be like the extract user that we have used and after that you are going to get the result from the users so and once you got this you gonna use like the json normalize of the pandas so this procedure will allow us to convert that json and normalize that data so all the data that we are going to extract is getting normalized using this function so that's all you have to understand here so after that the we are going to normalize like the first name so we are going to get the first name here then we got the last name and similarly we have other fit fields as well so we got like the country then we got the username then we have the password and email as well as we need to just this process user we need to save it as a csv file into the temp process user dot csv and we are going to give arguments like the header will be false and the index should be none so it will not create an index column which is unnecessary for you so this is all you have to do so let me tell you one thing you need you don't need to understand the whole thing if it is like confusing you can just ignore it for a while the one thing you can remember is like it is just processing your users data and give it in and just writing it back into a csv file that's it that's all it is doing and we are using like the python operator here to do so so once we save our python file and go into the dag as you can see these are not connected to each other so these doesn't have any dependency so these tasks are like standalone tasks the create table the extract user then we got the is api available and the process user task so if you just simply run this so just let's trigger this dag and let's see what happens so as you can see this is api available and the process user are going to fail so the create table is going to get completed so you have to define the dependencies between these tasks to be able to solve this issue so you can do that in the python code itself because like our is api available so our process user is totally de dependent on the extract user here but before jumping on to the next process once we need to create a connection of http because from where you will get the data right you need to get the data and api response from somewhere so you need to make the connection id here so in the code we have defined the connection id as user api here as well as the connection type would be like the http and in here the host would be like the random user dot me and slash api will be the path that our process and extract information and is api available operators will look out for so here we have to just give like the https colon slash slash random user dot me slash so this will be the path and then you gonna save it up so you have made the connection here so since our dag has failed so let's get into the dag and let's see if our all the processes are running fine or not so you go into the user processing now and in user processing you can go into the graph and in graph as you can see you can just trigger that tag so once you trigger it as you can see only the process user is failing because it will only trigger it whenever whenever you have you will be having the dependencies between all this so to handle the dependencies first let's also store that user somewhere in the postgre that will be our last procedure so let's do that and after that we can define the dependencies so you need to also understand what are hooks so hooks are like very versatile and they allows you to connect with various external systems so our external system here is the postgre sql 
so here we are going to use the postgres hooks for defining our store user operator so without further any ado let's jump on to it so the first thing we will be needing like we need to import like the postgres hook here so it is very important so that it can communicate with our external data source which is postgres here so we are going to import like postgres hook from the airflow.providers.postgres.hooks.postgres so from where once we have that after that we have to define a function where we can definitely store our users so as you can see we are defining the store users here function and after that we are going to like give the hook first so the hook will be where you need to get the connection id to the postgres so postgres we have already defined so we don't need to define that connection we just need like the user api and the postgres that will be enough and after that we are going to use this postgres hook procedure and after we will be like copying expert so we will use the copy expert of the hook and then store the data so what we are going to do we are running a simple sql statement so it will copy the users from the standard input with we have the delimiter as a comma separated and we have the file name and since file name is like process user.csv so it will like directly go to this path where we have stored our processed user and that will copy the data into our users table that is fairly simple sql statement and we have also defined the delimiter as well so that our data would be loaded correctly into the postgres sql table so once you do that after that you just have to define our operator at below in the structure of our dag so all you have to do is you have to create the store user here and after that you have to define like the python operator so since we are using the python operator here to kick off our already created function so after that we are going to use the task id here so the task id will be store user as similar to the variable that we have defined and after that we are going to call our store user function this is pretty simple and straightforward and pretty similar to our process user as well so since we are using python operator the syntactical difference will not be there and at last that is comes the most important thing which is like we need to define the dependencies so to define a dependency is pretty simple task all you have to do is you have to go and select the first task so our first task will be like create table so our create table after that you have to go like this the greater than symbols so the greater than symbols and it will go to is api available so it will go to is api available then similarly go this symbols and the next step would be like we are extracting the user so we are just extract users so once we extracted our users we are going to process our users so we are going to process the users now and after processing the users at last we are going to store those users so this will create the linkages and like the dependencies between all these tasks so once we save this file so we have successfully saved that just jump on to the airflow and refresh the page so as you can see we got create table extract is api available and process user but once you like refresh this as you can see this all changed we got the create table then we got the is api available then we got extract user then process and store so all these are like dependent upon each other and connected so this is like successful creation of the dag so congratulations if you are following along you have successfully created a apache airflow dag okay so once you have successfully created the dependencies you got all the task ready to do so you have created sensors hooks you got all the operators as well as all the connections are set so all you can do is you can just select this and schedule this dag and after that you can just trigger your dag so once you trigger your dag just let it go and see it in the action so as you can see we got the api available the extract user is running extract user is also completed then we got the process user so the process user is also created and the store user is also succeeded so there you go your dag is successfully created as well as it succeeded so you have just created a dag and also define the dependencies and it is running fine as well so just let's go ahead and let's see if the data is available in the table or not okay so to validate it we need to check if our files are created in the temp directory as well as the data is available in our users postgres sql table 
so to do that just head back to your vs code terminal and then we need to just fire up some commands and let's val validate our job so in here you need to just type like docker dash compose ps and in here you need to check the directory first so to check the directory you are going to use like docker exec dash it and in here we need to give like the worker so our worker is like materials airflow worker so you are going to just give it and copy that and paste it over here and after you paste it you are going to give like bin slash bin slash bash that's it and once you get there all you have to do is you have to just ls into the temp directory and there you go your process user.csv file is created so as you can see here we have already defined here the tmp process user.csv which is created by the process user functionality or we can say like the python operator so that operator has already created the file very good the first step is succeeded now you have got to go into our sql table and let's see if the data is generated or not so all you got to do is you have to just control d from here and again give like docker dash compose ps and in here all you have to do is again like give docker exec which is execute dash it and here we need to give like the postgre sql so here as you can see we got the postgre postgre one so we got to paste it over here and after that slash bin slash bash similarly so once you are in all you have to do is you are gonna go into the sql prompt so you are gonna type like p sql and dash capital u airflow without spaces and after that once you got into the sql as you can see we got the hash and the you can directly type like select star from users that's it semicolon and enter as you can see we got the two rows already created we got the first name last name country username the password and the email id and don't worry it is like randomized data provided by that http service so the data will be different for you right it is not going to be same so as you can see we got two entries here since it suggests that our job has triggered two times so once you trigger your DAG or schedule your DAG then the data will grow inside this table so this was really fun this is all about today's lecture we have successfully dealt with all the components and basic stuffs about the airflow and created a very simple DAG as well as the hooks sensors though all the topics which are like basic topics are created but next lecture is all about some of the advanced topic in the Apache airflow so that we are going to see in the next lecture so that's it about today's lecture so if you are facing any difficulties you can let me know in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as possible and also i'll be giving this code and link to this code in the description below so that you don't have to go into any hassle so in the next lecture which is going to get released on the 2nd october we are going to discuss about the advanced apache airflow concept where we'll see what are sub dags the trigger diagrams as well as xcom and data sharing also we'll see like what is scaling and how we can scale our pipelines and make our system highly available and we'll also work with different variables and the configurations and also we'll manage the connections and the secrets as well so that is going to be very fun so i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching